This month has been absolutely ridiculous, and I thought, since I don't have the time to make a couple of the huge videos I was planning on, I'll give an office tour today. So coming from the uh, home lab rack over here, I will enter in through this door, which I got from a closed radio station. It's a very nice door uh, with solid, thick glass, and the door keeps out a lot of sound from the basement, especially since the kids are playing in there. Uh, over here is my storage. I well, there's also storage there, and there's storage there, and I bought this recently for more storage, and I have that for storage, and I put together this thing because I had nowhere else to put all my video stuff, and I stuck my play button way up there and nobody ever sees it in videos or anything. So yeah, this office is getting to be a little bit crowded, uh, and yes, this is, this is very true. This is where I shoot most of my videos. I have my my camera right here uh, mounted to this thing. I have a video about that that nobody ever watched about how I made this guy at a local makerspace on their huge water jet cutter. It was pretty fun. Anyway, I got the camera mounted here with my teleprompter. And then I also have a little magic arm over here that holds the microphone about six to eight inches from where my mouth is right here when I'm talking. A long time ago when I used to use my webcam a lot more, I had this in the frame and that was cool, but now nobody ever sees it because really the framing is more like that. This is my main shooting area. I usually have this chair here, but when I shoot a video, I move the chair, I cover up the vent, and then if I leave it covered, my little uh, CO2 detector over here starts going off after an hour or so because I breathe, and when you breathe, you release CO2, and that can asphyxiate you after a certain amount of time. I also built, or I 3D printed a couple holders for my Xbox controller and my headphones, which if I'm ever going to do any gaming, I plug them in down here underneath to this uh, little gaming PC that I built. There's a whole video on that. I have my Mac Studio rack mounted here and all the networking and audio gear for this office, which I uh, route to these two monitors. Most of the time I'm just working on that one. Sometimes I use that one. Uh, but for video shooting, I set up everything, almost everything can go through a couple buttons in here. Right now it's not on, but um, this button turns off my overhead lights, uh, but I leave them on now for shoots just for convenience's sake. I have this little light here that sometimes I use to light things up over here, just a little bit extra if I don't want to grab out extra lights. This is like my workshop on my desk. <laughs> right now there's a, I'm testing on an NVR. I'm doing some ridiculously weird things with the Le Potato. I have all my compute modules, I have all my Raspberry Pis that I use for testing, and a compute module I.O. board. This is where kind of my home base for this... Oh shoot, the camera's on. The battery's probably dead now. So yeah, don't leave your camera on. Luckily I have extra batteries. Uh, but I have my little air gradient sensor over here. It, it tells me when I'm about to die from asphyxiating myself with carbon dioxide. I've been testing out a bunch of different smart outlets for different projects. This is my solution to, I always need to plug something in and I hated reaching under there and plugging into that. So now I just have a power strip on my desk. Someday I'll have a better solution. And then I always have a lot of USB things to, powered up. I need to charge my phone. So I have, I don't know, power ad. It was cheap on Amazon. I should probably get that one from Pine64, the one with all the little meters on it. I also love this. This is like probably the most handy thing in my entire office. It stores three micro SD cards and three SD cards. I really should redesign it so it holds like six or eight micro SD cards because I always need to grab one. So I just grab a micro SD card and grab this and then I plug it into the computer on the front to flash it and I can flash micro SD cards for all my projects. I rock the small uh, kind of laptop sized magic keyboard and the magic trackpad. This trackpad is so amazing for editing. I will never go back to a mouse unless some mouse comes out with genius, amazing improvements. Uh, but this guy I use for the, oh, apparently it's on, uh, the PC for gaming. Uh, it's not a very good mouse. Uh, over here is like, <laughs> I just got back from a trip that you will hear about soon. And I just, these are the things that I still need to put away. Some batteries, a GoPro. Oh, this came in the mail, a cable mod adapter for that monster 4090 so that it actually fits in my case and a battery that i was using little i hate this remote this is the worst remote ever made i'm pretty sure it takes like 10 pairing attempts to get it to pair again so i'm just going to buy myself another decent remote then i have this little this is my little kit on the desk of everything from my ltt screwdriver that i use now 
daily. I said I probably wouldn't in my first video, but I've kind of grown to love it. Still, I think it's better at 50 bucks, but you know, I have a bunch of them now for all those videos. Then I got a couple of these little Klein multi-bit things for uh, Torx and for Phillips and Flathead. Those come in handy. And my pen, pencil, and a thick Sharpie, because you always got to label things. And I go through about a scissors every two or three months, just cutting through plastic packaging and everything else. This was from 45 Drives. So what I do is I use one of these to kind of wipe off these screens quick. And then whenever I get a new one with some piece of kit, I just swap it out and throw away whatever one's here. This came with the uh, 45 Drives Storinator. I don't know why you get a microfiber cloth. I guess they want me to keep the front of it clean because it looks cool. Oh, and uh, that's where that one was. I have another base plate for my Manfrotto tripods. I decided a long time ago just to stick to one system for all my tripods so that I don't have to like have different base plates and screw and unscrew things all the time. All right, and heading down underneath the desk, I have this little tray. I don't even remember what I got it from on, I think I got it from Amazon. But I've got this tray to be just a little bit bigger than my little gaming keyboard here. I have a 2.5 gig switch right here that goes into the 10 gig switch. That's for testing, oh, it's falling off right now. Testing Raspberry Pis, testing other devices that are better than a gig or even one gig devices. This is a standing desk and it's powered on. I, I don't think I've changed the height of it for like, I don't know, five years now. So it's kind of, I should have just gotten a desk that's this high. I also have this nice little Kleenex box holder because it was up here and I have allergies and it's allergy season, so I need Kleenex. But every time you pull out a Kleenex, it shoots out like tons of dust. So everything that was up here was getting super dusty. So I found this wall mount one and I found out I could drill through the top of it. And now I have this little, little Kleenex box. So this is my mini teleprompter iPhone holder. If I need to use this iPhone for teleprompting, I just swipe it out of there and throw it up in the teleprompter right up there. Oh, and this guy, this will be in a video soon. This is the world's first Compute Module 4 Raspberry Pi rack mount server that's a commercial solution. You can buy this off the shelf for rack mount for NVR. That's also what I'm using this to test right now. Anything else in the rack that you wanna ask about, leave a comment, I'll, I'll answer. And I got my trash can. Trash cans are nice. Coming back over on this back wall, I have this guitar, which is conveniently missing a string. Uh, that's been missing a string since the pandemic. I haven't picked this up since then. Uh, there's there's not too much dust on it. Uh, I tried getting into two guitars. I actually had an acoustic guitar too, and I got through a few songs, and then I just, once I broke the string, I stopped playing, and well, there you go. Don't ask about this yet. Uh, this is all the lanyards from the past events that I spoke at, but I thought that'd be a fun thing to have in the background, and it is. And this is the last thing I was at, Ansible Fest, back uh, a few months back, before my surgery. This is a picture I took of, I think it was 2017? when the uh, the last solar uh, total solar eclipse. I already have plans for 2024. If you don't know about it, uh, check out the website, which I'll link in the description somewhere. You might also notice these, these kind of grungy looking panels. I put these here because this office is literally a cube and cubes are the worst possible thing for echo and noise. So I put these in here to kind of absorb some of that sound, especially in the corner, because the microphone is here and I don't want to have reflections going into it of sound, so I have all of these to kind of catch the reflections in the corner and not send them back in the microphone. It makes it sound a little better. Down here I have my uh, little 4K Blackmagic monitor. So what I do when I'm going to record is I turn this on, and I really need to automate this more, and I turn the camera on, and then there I am. And now that's what you see when I do my videos, except for, as I said, this vent is closed, and this chair back here is not back here anymore. This is cool because when I'm ready to record, I just hit this record button and this will store ProRes footage or other formats too. I got this idea from Explaining Computers, uh, Christopher. He uses a similar setup for his desk-based recording and uh, I, I liked it and so I took that idea and ran with it. Before I finish at the desk, I forgot to mention I do have a couple studio monitor speakers. I forget what these are. PreSonus or something? I don't know. Yeah, PreSonus. Eris E3.5. These are not the best in the world, but they sound great to me. Um, I'm not mastering like the next Led Zeppelin album or something, so these are fine for YouTube videos. And you always need some air and lotion because it gets really dry in the winter down here, especially when the heat's on. And coming around to the other side behind my desk, I have this stand that has almost nothing in it. I don't, 
I, don't, I think there's nothing in there. Yeah, there's nothing in there. So kind of a waste of space, but it holds this plant, which is also never in my videos. So there it is. It's in a video now, uh, but I do have some convenient things down here like gaff tape. You can never have enough gaff tape. This stuff is awesome. It's like duct tape, but way better and it's black. So you don't see it. I also have blue tape when I need to tape something on a wall uh, or, you know, tape something over something really quick. I have these Velcro straps. There's no need to buy really specialty ones like LTT straps, unless you love supporting LTT. Uh, but these are from Velcro directly and they work great and you can get a ton more for a ton less. This is my tape roll. It's tape. Measurement. Uh, it's always good to have a tape measure. I also have a smaller ruler up there that does centimeters and millimeters. This is where I put all the little cable ties. Sometimes you just need one and they're there. And packing tape because I need to pack things up and ship them. Oh, and what's this guy? Let's see. Oh, that was back when I worked with Fox at uh, a former employer. And we made these up because we went through a horrible, horrible experience getting something launched. It, was, it wasn't because of Fox. It wasn't because of the place I worked for. It was just because it was a lot. This I bought a few years ago because sometimes you just need to glance and make sure that your hair is not like horrible looking. It's vanity, but this, is, this was a recent addition. I needed a place to stash these little lights that I use to light up uh, B-roll shots sometimes. So I can grab one of these magnetic lights and also this little magnetic tripod, screw it in and have a little light for wherever I need it for little things like Raspberry Pis. I also put all my chargers in here. So this one does like 18650s and smaller. This one does those NP batteries, this kind that's used for all kinds of lighting and, and video equipment. I have my extra batteries for like the Sony cameras and uh, the GoPro ones are somewhere else because I had them, you know, AA and AAA charger, Sony charger, GoPro charger. I wish there were some standard in the world of chargers because there's just too many of them. And then up here, I have all the tools that I use in my office. I have a workshop and you see that in a lot of videos, but these are tools that are handy to have on hand like that ruler I mentioned earlier. It's just a nice straight, straight edge ruler. I have a little spudger here that I use a lot. Um, oops, I just dropped it back there. It'll be hard to get out now. I have some solder and a battery soldering iron, which is on, so that's not good. I wonder how long that's been on. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm glad there's no fire in here. Anyway, then I have my teeny tiny needle nose pliers and a pair of longer needle nose pliers that are helpful grabbing little things. I have a pair of wire strippers here not the best pair in the world, but I like them. And a crimper for DuPont connectors. You'll hear more about those soon too. And I absolutely hate DuPont connectors. And my micro tweezer little needle nose. Micro flush cutter, little flush cutter, pliers, whatever you call them. And I hate the screwdriver anyway. It shouldn't be there. Oh, and yeah, this guy. Uh, oh, and the Amazon one. So these are two that were from that LTT screwdriver review. They're handy to have. I don't use them much. As I, as you saw, I have the LTT driver over there. Over here is just like, this is one light that I use sometimes. It, it always has this little uh, light stand baby pin adapter attached so I can slap it on a light stand somewhere. I can put two, two batteries in it. It also has a power supply, but I've so rarely use it and it has a remote control. I think I've used this once ever. So when you buy lighting systems, you can go really expensive, which this is not or you can buy cheap and uh, it's just kind of utilitarian. This guy I used when I was trying to do podcasting, but I haven't really used this mic stand forever. And these are some gels. Every so often you need a gel. And so you can see I've, you know, oh gosh, it's falling back there. <clears throat> but I don't use gels that much. I'm not, I'm not a lighting guy. This is my cabinet. Well, this is artwork for my daughters. So you can see there's a uh, there's the Octocat from GitHub and another version of it. There's the Raspberry Pi because they know I like Raspberry Pi. This is the Blue Angels. We saw the Blue Angels and she drew that for me. And this is a Valentine's card and that's a unicorn. So thank you daughters. Now you're in my video. Looking down here, this was from a trip I just took. Uh, this is my, my Pelican with all my fun stickers. Uh, there's some fun ones on here. You can find uh, if you spot some things from past videos or some things from other places that I've been uh, and other companies I've worked with. And there's a little Tech Tech Potato down there and 45 drives. Thanks for the Storinator. This cabinet has 
photography supplies. So all the lenses I use, this is probably, no, this is probably the most used lens, a macro lens, 50 millimeter from Sony. It's a pretty good lens. It's a little slow to focus, but it's pretty good. Uh, but I have some prime lenses and then I have a super zoom lens here. Basically I have all APS-C. I used to have full frame, but I went down so that the cameras are smaller. I also have my little Pioneer Blu-ray drive that I use to rip Blu-ray discs and an older Blu-ray drive that does only HD resolution. Then I have some books up here. So there's my grandpa Newman. There's a video about him that nobody watched too, but it was a fun video about 3D printing and scanning. Here's, there's DuPont connectors. I hate DuPont connectors. You'll find out why soon. Oh, here's some lighting supplies. And this guy has never made it in a video yet, but I bought it for a video that I still have yet to make. It, it turns on and look, there's pretty lights. This is my drawer of boxes. These are not Raspberry Pis, these are all empty boxes. And a few old cases that I don't need. And then this is power supplies, batteries, chargers, that kind of stuff. This is my bin of cables. Needs more organization, but it's, it's decent. Everything's in a bag, like, for example, video cables, DVI and VGA. And this is my, these are like the old things that I just can't get rid of. They take up space. I got my old Apple CD-ROM two times drive. That was my first ever CD-ROM, pretty cool. PowerBook 3400. This is the original airport. Like this was back when it included a modem and there's something rattling, rattling around in there. That's not too good. Last time I turned it on, it all worked. It actually, I could connect to it from my computer, but it has, has a built-in 56K modem. This is more boxes of stuff. Here's a couple keyboards and mice that I use when I'm testing. Oh, we got my, my portable camera bag. So I throw all my camera gear in here. If I'm doing a one day shoot somewhere, it's a nice bag. I've, I've had it for years and years. I used to do photography, like pro photography, and this was the main bag I'd use for it. I actually, I think there's a GPS tracker somewhere in there. It's probably long dead by this point. Uh, but that bag, that bag can hold up to tens of thousands of dollars of equipment. This is my green screen. It's just a portable fold out green and blue screen that I use mostly for thumbnails. This is like stuff that I'm working on which you can read some of the labels there if you look closely. I'm really excited about this, but I just haven't had the time yet to look at it. A lot of the stuff, this is like incoming things that I'm working on. And uh, you know, I'm still sorry to anybody who sent something in and I just haven't gotten around to it. I just haven't had the time. Time is very hard to come by. Here's my slider that I use, my light. Uh, there's the gimbal I use. There's a little sandbag of weight. This is a bag for my big teleprompter, which is over on the other side of my room, and my little portable teleprompter, the Parrot. This thing is not that good, but it, it works if you need a portable teleprompter. That's all I'll say about it. All right, so moving back from that area, we have the wall of storage. Uh, this has, there's a lot of PCI Express stuff. There's like 10 gig NICs and, uh, and DAC cables. There's uh, transceivers in here. There's stuff for DIN rails, breadboards, JTAG. Uh, webcams, so this is all the Raspberry Pi cams and other kind of cameras that I test. There's tons of USB adapters and crazy things. There's, there's, it's literally timey-wimey stuff. There's a lot in here that's, oh man, I really want to talk about this stuff. I just have not had the time. It, it takes a lot of time to talk about time. There's uh, all those SSDs I have in that all SSD NAS out there. Eight terabytes per. That was fun. That was fun, but uh, a little overkill. These guys, the Bleak KVM, I am going to bring some of these to my dad and we're going to put them in on Gearling Engineering. So go subscribe on Gearling Engineering if you want to see us use these things in the real world. There's all my fans, lots of them, big and small. Daddy, come up, I'll, I'll come up soon. Uh, over here is my broken stuff. So yeah, there's a broken pie in there. Uh, I, want, I want to do a big video on power over Ethernet because I think there's a lot that people don't understand about it. Someday I'll get to that. There's also this guy. I'll talk about that someday. Pi KVM V4, again, I'm gonna install that over on Gearling Engineering. I was supposed to do that this month. Sorry to Pi KVM. I told you it'd be March, but it's not gonna be March anymore. The Pi shortage has really killed me this year. Like, at this point, I, anytime I do a video about a really cool CM4 based solution, everybody in the comments is like, you can't get one and I get it. Uh, I can't get them either. I haven't bought one since 2021. Someday they'll be back in stock. We'll see. So moving over here, this was supposed to be like a second workstation. You can see how well that's working out. It's literally just all of the stuff that I use for all of the projects that I work on. 
and uh, this this will be fun to work with. It's uh, an out of band rescue console PDU that lets you log into things through serial interfaces and control the power and monitor their power usage. It's it's a lot in one box, and they make ones that are even cooler than this. So that'll be fun. Uh, this guy will be in one of my CM4 roundups. Up here is my my old favorite. This is the Nikon D700. It is. I think it's still my favorite camera ever. I love it because it was like when Nikon didn't care that they would cannibalize their professional sales by just making literally the best camera they could ever make for a lot lower price. Like that was that. Was that. And so many professional photographers converted to Nikon because of that camera. It was awesome. Because of this mess, I don't get up here that much. It looks like there's some chargers for the Nikon and some boxes. So yeah. So. Nothing I use too much. Uh, the Nikon only gets used sporadically now. So heading over here, there's this is my little Harbor Freight parts rack. It's uh, nice and cheap, and uh, but the nice thing is I can pop this out if I want some micro SD cards. I just bring it over to where I need them and pop them back in. So it's cheap, but it's highly functional. I, I'm thinking about getting more of these sometime. But I have all my USB chargers. I have my standoffs and screws for M2, M3, M2.5, that kind of stuff. I have thermal paste and cleaning wipes, and I have no idea. I think I needed one of these, a USB, little USB cover, and you could only buy like 50, so I have like 50. There's a few things like that in here too. Like I needed, I needed one tripod screw, so I bought this kit with like 60 in it, because you can't just get one. Uh, this was sent in by a viewer to test. It's an, I think it's an espresso bin. I just haven't had time to look at it. Uh, it's kind of like in a Mac Studio like case. This is the uh, this is called the Elrond. It's a almost one of a kind. I think Linus Tech Tips might have one of these too. Uh, this is for testing NVMe, SATA, and SAS drives all in one chassis. It's kind of cool. It lets you test all kinds of different things. There's a mug over there. I used it once and now it's over there and I'll probably forget about it. Oh, and I got my Ninja. This is for video recording on the go sometimes. And then this is, uh, don't look at that up there, uh, but down here we got my mini Windows PCs, like tiny mini micro and ARM PCs, like the the Surface, what is that thing called? I don't know, the dev kit, Windows dev kits in there. Here's an old MacBook Air. And this is my box of not Raspberry Pis. So I have a number of them and actually I have more in another box somewhere. I just don't have them in here yet. This thing I bought on Amazon, I think. I, 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 every time that I go to Lowe's, I need to check what size a screw is. I'm like, this is ridiculous. I can just check here, and then if I need to buy it online, I can, or if I go to Lowe's, I just know right away. So I bought one of these, they're kind of expensive, but when you use it like on a weekly basis, it's, it's kind of nice to have. And over here is the last little bit of this office, my video equipment wall. This has been expanding over time. Actually, I don't even remember what goes here. Oh, the GoPros and stuff hang up here. But I have some tripods, I have a little Joby thingy that you can stick on to stuff. I have my battery holders, so different ones. These are for, I think these are for my laser pointers. Um, the very, very high powered ones that you need to be very careful with. And then I got 18650 cells. I need to get a few more of these probably. And double A's, the good old double A. I only have two left in here. That's because I was on my trip. I took a lot of batteries with me. And uh, then I have my audio stuff up here. So some microphones, there's a Zoom F2 and a Rode Wireless Go 2. This is a nice little light uh, from, it's the Loom Cube. It's just nice to have a battery and light in one. I have a couple more of these cheap ones up here too. And then this guy I use sometimes when I'm recording audio and I need multiple mic inputs, the Zoom H2, it's a handy thing. Then I got my the bling, there's a star and a thing and play button. Someday maybe I'll get the gold one too, that'd be fun. You guys can subscribe and make that happen. Tons of adapters, I have smartphone tripod adapters, I have other kinds of tripod adapters that do all kinds of crazy things. Then I have hot shoe adapters for flash and camera type stuff. Um, some audio gear has hot shoes. Then I have some crazy things like a two camera tripod adapter and a vertical mount that, uh, you know, if you, if you get into like shorts and vertical videos, that's helpful, I guess. It's annoying. Then I have clamps. Like this is like a mini magic arm from Small Rig. Uh, that's nice. I have my little, little dashboard. Stick this on your windshield and you can get a camera mount for a GoPro on it. 
This is for holding like scrims or other lighting gear on top of a light stand. There was something in there. Uh, baby pin adapter. So yeah, there's when you get into the world of video and photography, there's multiple types of stands, multiple types of arms, multiple types of tripods, multiple types of tripod heads. It just gets insane. And that's part of the thing that I, I don't love it, but it's kind of fun to mess with gear, kind of like mini tripods and things. So I needed to organize this stuff because it was, it was literally in a pile over here. And now if I need something, it's just on the wall. I just come up, grab it and go. Now these panels I got from Lowe's and I have like wood pegboards over in my workshop and they're great for when you need to cover a large space. These are nice because I would like add one on as I got more gear, but they don't sell these anymore. If anyone knows where I can get more of those, that'd be cool. Leave a comment below. Hopefully not too expensive. I mean, the nice thing was these were like 15 or 20 bucks a piece and you could fill up a wall with them over time instead of getting a big pegboard and cutting it to size. Down below I have a little space heater because sometimes in the winter this room does get a little colder because we're in the basement and the basement floor gets very cold. And we've come full circle. Here we are back at the desk and uh, you know that's that's where I do my work. So that's the current studio. That's as of 2023, early 2023, things are going to be changing and uh, you know, I've put a lot into the studio. A lot of work has gone into the organization and all these racks over here. I'll get to a lot of these fun projects. I'll get to the reason why I didn't post pretty much at all this month. And uh, we'll get to that soon. So subscribe and I'll see you next time.